Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me around the fireside tonight. My name is Joe, and I'm here to tell you a story. A story about beauty, and grief, and hope. A story about churches, and nature. A story utterly suffused with emotion. A story about cultivation. Proudly presenting The Love Hundred by Neil Willis. The incredibly talented poet makes his return to Tales by the Fireside to share with us a very personal piece. Follow him on Facebook at NW Poetry and show him some support. Thank you for letting me read this out, Neil. As a quick aside, a hundred in this context is a piece of land specially cultivated for growing and agriculture. If you enjoyed this episode, please let me know by leaving a rating or review, by liking and commenting, and subscribing to whatever platform you're listening on. Every one of you truly do mean the world to me and to the channel. You can also visit my website, talesbythefireside.com, to see ways you can support the show, listen to every single episode, and join our mailing list. Now please, get comfortable, let go of the daylight, and join me for our story. The Love Hundred by Neil Willis The best church is not necessarily the one with the biggest dome or spire, or that with the most people. Stand in nature's church. Behold your family church. You as a self-church. To believe in yourself. Then decide. 1. The Cathedral of Chess You could hear black and white keys playing chorals through a cathedral tinted in sepia light to go back in time to the dawning Christians. The doors of oak latch open to eternity to walk the righteous path of the book Psalms following footsteps of martyrs and saints. You could almost hear a whisper through high arches past the organ flutes, down to the altar, where thrones should stand for seated lords. You could kiss reed pillars that climb to heaven. Fingers could splay slow up each of the curves, trying to reach and touch the clouds of gods. You could look through the shaft sunlight from the windows to high stained glass arches woven with lead to glimpse of you, the flight of winged angels. You can walk the stone pathway of devoted pilgrims that have prayed at the tall candlestick altar following the lead of legended disciples where stained glass shows saints beside a blonde cherub child, where bishops are two-dimensional soldiers, where the clergy are enshrined as though they are second to God. By raised scripture carvings they reside, where cloisters are webs over the prey they aim to catch, where marble-checked floors are the game of chess, and most of us, the playing prawns. The bishop stands to the king. The God's army pieces serve to win match. And 1,000 mouths are singing Alleluia to show their commitment to the meaning of life and their redemption to reach the higher heavens. A hand-figured cross a doff of a gent's cap, a skirted slow curtsy, 
a bow of head is their respect. But I stand back to the wall, the cool stone as my stay. Beyond all the glory, I'm here for nothing except the angel. And in my moment, I just stood and stared. The window threw sunbeams across the wall, as though highlighting my thought, looking higher than myself, looking through gladed dust, looking to a vision of the enshrined trust, a eulogy of beautiful sculpture mounted in chiselled lime, far from the pompous of the church, far from the singing of the choirs, far from pillars and pinnacle spires. It captured how one man is not alone. The battle-beaten soldier, wounded, fell. As an angel held him, she had the biggest wings, and the fallen's lifelong wartime friend showed the most pallid face from hell. He knew, with sabre in scabbard from his waist, and bugle draped as a sling over one shoulder, his soldier from the field of red poppies was in best hands, death to his face. Although, in my mind, I have always heard the organ of acceptance and repentance through the church of God's soldiers. In that moment, I heard the bugle take slack, the bugle to rally the army, the bugle as horses galloped, the bugle to help triumph. As soldiers came under attack, And on the death of the heroes, on the death of lamed horses, on the death of a fallen nation, the final notes of the last post came back. One comrade with tears in eyes, one comrade played true salute, one comrade a shadow to some, one comrade to hold the country as one. people's hope. After the bells have played for sheer hours over the city with overwhelming power, on woven green cushions where knees have prayed, where thoughts of belief makes a believer's day, after the trinity doctrine has been taught, commanding impreachment of one's own thought, on hallowed church ground the holy communion to bring the priest's flock to Christ's own union. The people's prayer is the people's hope. As generations fell, it became their way to cope. The candle. In the silence of the church with sepia hue, I'm lighting a candle to remember you. A silent commitment, you're not forgotten. The death of my father, to continual grief, my single flame gesture is some relief. I see the wisp of flame flicker as though a wink, the kindred smoke in the spirit's waved rise. A belief of the memories that it spells from beloved family to when you fell. My love is a hundred of red field poppies, my heart cries the rains on which they feed. As my mind gushes, the more the storms, the more the memory, the love hundred sprawls. The nimbus clouds follow the long horizon through skies of red. The colour, my heart's bled. They're the kindred train leading to you. I couldn't help but stare with memories true. In the blossom of spring, the birds mate and sing. After winter migration, with happy refrain, it was they that flew into October skies and didn't realise, early winter, you died.
I try to snub the wick between my fingers, rub them to see fingertips of grey soot, but I relit the kindred love candle again. It brought back a smile, seeing the ever flame. I saw you as my bowed tree under I stood, when lightning struck and life's thunders rolled. I could stretch my hand out to feel the last rains. You let me walk alone, momentum regained. Every dandelion seed that floats in the air, every white feather that falls slow to the ground, maybe God's sign that you are walking beside me, your continual spirit is our kindred pride. My lit candle is my own hope. My words to you helps me cope. I could grab the grain candle smoke and hold it in my whitened fist to capture every memory that clench would be forever kissed. Hope and dreams. The father cradles his newborn son, day rising through the window of life, arms of comfort that show love, tiny fingers wrapped to daddy's thumb. The innocent mind that cannot think, the blurred eyes that cannot quite see, the open mouth that speaks hunger is the start of hope on his first blink. I hold the dream that you will better me, that you'll see more than I ever did see. I hold the dream that your health will be best, your goodness of heart will beat in your chest. I hold the dream that you'll be a prince and meet a princess to live a life of bliss. If truth be told, I also hold a dream that our family bond ever reigns supreme. I want you to roll through the Chilterns, jubilant poppies peek their heads through grain, and run through springtime beech woodlands, bluebells lay silent as their Sunday display. Beech trees are pillars to reach the skies, their canopy makes nature's temple of play. Look from them through leafed arch windows, see father and son walk through the fields of May. We've built our father-son team. My baby holds his hopes. My loving holds our dreams. My hundred has a new growth sapling tree. Well nurtured, he'll grow much taller than me. The Father's Hug As a child, I would sit by you, hand on knee. As you walk through the door, run to hug your legs. Your one hand on my back to reassure, I'd know your cologne and the smell of your breath. Why did you not hug me as a man to a man? It would be the deepest feeling beating all others. Security bound, a father to son. Was it so wrong to hold your man-child's arms? Can my selfishness be condemned? Does reversion to innocence make amends? For all I now want covers my regret. Greatly overthought are my dreams spent. I want to be the cottage bayed window, your rambling rose as a hug over my shoulder. With open flowers that spell me love, your petaled kiss to comfort my brow. Your squared man hands would curve to hold me, to soften your heart and pretense of physical touch, your commitment to be forever, my never forgotten throughout my life. As I saw you lying so calmly, suited in state, I told you that I'd be all right after you're gone. You must have known what I would become. You could have told me, but didn't reply. I realised I was the blonde cherub child, 
and you were the saint standing by. You could have told me, but you didn't reply. My hundred blooms all year long, no matter how I try. The poppies keep on sprawling and will not ever die. And the dandelions stand between, seed heads are held high. Every month is forever spring, a thousand fairies will ever fly. Church of Beaches I took my son to the Church of Beaches that climb higher than our eyes reach. We took the kindred candle of love and thought of you as far above. Your grandfather would prefer you to play than stand in pews and so pray as he was always a man of fresh air. We brought his candle so he can share. We brought his candle so he can share. And the branches join as cloisters arched and light shafted through the leaves of March and beech pillars to skies reached. We sat in silence without churches preach. We sat in silence. We look out through arched window beaches across my hundred of rolling light and in the content of our own hearts there wasn't a single poppy in sight. Not a single red poppy. And I hugged my son through heart of my love. I saw your candle burn more than bright. Your wink of flame told me how you feel to feel your son's soul shows a man's might. To feel your son's soul shows a man's might. And to his forehead my petaled lips that said a lot more than a father's grip. And blowing through the high branches was your voice heard in nature's wisp. The Nightmare I dreamed that night of my hundred of red poppies that came back after emotions flowed. I saw you walking towards me through one thousand red flowers. You walked as the handsome man, the man with a beautiful smile, the man with a crisp white shirt, the man whose eyes brightly flirt. I could almost smell childhood cologne. I smelt the memory of your breath. I was sat upon your shoulders. I swung on your arms stretched. And before my words could tell, my heart died. As to ground, suddenly you fell. And my pallid face was sheer white, as through illness you fell to life's plight. I looked up to the bluest skies, expectant the angel of wings would fly by. My night cries recalled the cathedral, my moment when I stared. Where was my angel of mercy, to give gracious love only she could share? I have to think of your illness pathway, as though we were a family at battle, as though enemy was constant attack, as though we were rallying beside you. Even then I held the kindred lantern, the lantern where the flame was bright, the lantern that held your spirits true, the lantern to lead our family through. The family window. In my mind's sepia hue church, you are my pillars of strength. The altar holds the tallest candle. The cloisters bow over to hold me. The checkered floor beneath my feet, I realise, is life's game of chess where there's not a single pathway and is played without bishop or queen. Our woven glass family window stands higher than any churches, stands more for life and its meaning, stands as picture to our hearts bleeding. Our framed glass family album shows an ever light shines through, shows we all sat on your shoulder, shows no two-dimensional soldiers. And our mind's arch window is open, 
until every psalm has been read, until our lives are fully defined, until, next to your love, we are enshrined. And finally, after I've ever kept looking, a glimpse of the winged angel flies behind. The bugle. And as the last post is played on the 5th of November, resonating through the winter's air is the bugle's final note. The bugle's quivering last note. The bugle's ever strong last note. Fallen leaves that lay at my feet empathise my fallen heart. I cry again in winter rain as words get stuck in my throat. And my sapling is now his own man, to pay his own pilgrimage to his grandfather's life steps. To his own hundred, he should stand. The Hundred of Memories My hundred of love poppies is now millions of flowers. They all stand with new buds, saluting to petal heads of red. And... One billion fairies float your love, they're swathing the hundreds air. A trillion memories over fields as dandelions blow away their heads. The birds stayed this first winter, they cycle the hundred in display. Singing low, a less colourful tune, they are here to pay their respects. And the clouds' cheeks are of grey, sky of colour, is another day. Hanging heads, shoulder to shoulder, they are blowing to acknowledge the dead. And I hold my hand to heart, and I stand in my silence, and I cry the hardest tears, as a sign of not just respect, nor the love you'd expect but a sign of all I regret. My hundred is a million poppies.